Okay, hi everyone and welcome to this live. Um, today I'm going to do an interview. We are doing weekly live interviews like this uh, on our Instagram channel or Facebook channel and post it afterwards on YouTube um, and also Instagram, LinkedIn and Facebook. Um, so in these lives we are having interviews with stays, team members, bloggers, nomads. Um, so we have all of our community here and um, yeah if you want to you can check out our platform which is nomadstays.co um, there you will find all our beautiful stays we have stays especially for digital nomads for more extended stays and uh, yeah check it out if you, and if you want to meet one of our stays uh, you can stay tuned because today I'm having a chat with Aunt Bear Lodge, which is a beautiful, beautiful stay in the Drakensberg Mountains in uh, KwaZulu Natal in South Africa. And yeah, the stay is a um, very nature close um, stay in the Drakensberg Mountains. And um, yeah, I'm happy to have. Andrew today who's going to tell us about his life over there and I'm going to invite him to this live session now hopefully he's online and can chat with us And there he is. Just waiting for him to come live. Hey Andrew. Hello Lena, nice to meet you here. Nice to meet you too. Happy to have you here. So I was uh just talking a little bit about uh your stay and where you're located, but maybe you can do a short introduction yourself. Who are you and uh, what is your stay called and where is it? Okay, so my name's Andrew. I'm from Empe Lodge and we're situated in the Drakensberg Mountains of KwaZulu Natal. It's a, uh, in South Africa. Uh, we have a, a pretty small lodge. Uh, we have just 15 rooms. And uh, we're, we're very into this living in the middle of nowhere that, and it's a sustainable lifestyle. Okay. So uh, we, we would lo love to invite uh, digital nomads to come out and spend some time in paradise, basically, uh, and uh, enjoy, enjoy our mountains. So uh, a little bit about Ampe Lodge is that, that uh, my, myself and my wife, we, we came here probably 21 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started with a ruin and we've been fixing it ever since. So uh, we, we're very into this alternative and sustainable building principles. So we've built out of straw bales, rammed earth, uh, uh, upcycled wood, uh, uh, sun, sun dried clay bricks we, we've made. We've, we we cut the thatch on the the farm for the for the roof ourselves. So it's all very hyper local and uh, um, very sustainable build, building principles, which has created some really beautiful structures. We've also got a, a luxury cave that's probably one of these these places that's pretty much unique to, almost to the whole world. What so, would mean? Okay. The, the luxury cave is it's um it's an accommodation unit that's built under this rock mm -hmm. it's got glass doors that open onto a wooden deck with hammock chairs a, a, a really spectacular view i mean 
the view looks out onto the mountains and you, you can see from Giants Castle right across to the amphitheater. That's about 150 or 160 kilometers uh, of uninterrupted view. And, wow. um, uh, the, the, the nice thing about, about living here is that we, we completely in the middle of nowhere. And, but with the way, way people work these days, uh, it, there, there's an opportunity for, for people to, to just pick up their laptop and, and work for, from, from paradise. It was actually an idea I had uh, mm -hmm. 20 years ago uh, when, when we came here. Um, I used to do IT and uh, um, I IT. thought I'd work, live here and um, I, I'd just work, work uh, online. But mm -hmm. uh, when I first got here, there was just absolutely no infrastructure. Uh, okay. Phones didn't work. And, uh, there was no such thing as Wi-Fi. Uh, it was all uh, dial-up that worked o over a modem that was just terrible. So yeah. uh, things have changed a lot in the la last 20 years. And now, now we, we jo joined civilization with connectivity. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, I can see we have a very good connection. So you seem to have a very good Wi-Fi there. So, so pe people can uh, kind of get the best of both worlds now. We, 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 ta we, we have taken on a lot of volunteers uh, mm -hmm. um, up until now. We haven't done, done this digital nomad uh, concept yet, but I think it, the, the place just lends itself to it. So yeah. Um, yeah. With, with our vo volunteer program, uh, I teach people to do woodwork. Uh, we've made every piece of furniture in the lodge ourselves, and it's all it's all artistic. And uh, um, uh, but but at the same time functional. So and we try to take uh, materials that that have served their 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 lifespan with something else and upcycle mm -hmm. them into something new and give them a new lease of life. And re we've created some really really beautiful things. You, you're welcome to have a look on our website. You can see there, there's lo lots of pictures there about uh, of what that's about. And then I've been uh, teaching people how to do woodwork. I give these woodwork lessons, and then uh, um, volunteers kind of they, they those that want to do that kind of thing. They some of them stay with us for three months, six months. I've, had, I've I think the longest has been about nine months that we've had somebody stay stay here. And, so they um, stay at your place and, and work for yeah. you as well. Yeah, and then they do. They, we do like a uh, um, work exchange. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, so they can they can work and uh, uh, they they get accommodation and food food from us and they they live in this unbelievable paradise. So yeah. at the moment, I've got uh, uh, one guy from the Czech Republic, mm -hmm. uh, and he's doing woodwork. And then I've got two girls from the South Coast, uh, so they're South African, and they're here to and doing horse training. So oh, okay. we're into this whole uh, natural horsemanship, mm -hmm. and uh, so we we do all this horse whispering, and uh, it's it's really interesting to see how well that actually works. So you okay. can take a horse that's never been ridden before, do, uh -huh. do a little bit like a wild horse. horse. And uh, the next thing you know, you can you can kind of uh, almost sit on it. It's it's within a day, and oh, really? no, no, it hurts any horses. It, it's basically just a method of communication that that allows them to come together, and then they can do this. Interesting. It works really well. Okay, so so maybe let's start at the very beginning. So, 21 years ago, approximately, you started this. What where, where do you originally come from? So I'm South African, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I left South Africa in the 80s, and then uh, at some stage I ended up in Germany. I stayed in Germany for 12 years. I was in Cologne, and uh, uh, I got... That's a two-hour drive from, from where I am right now. <laughs> where are you? I'm in Münster. Oh, uh, Münster, okay. I know Münster as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I got married in Germany, and then we decided that we wanted this more alternative lifestyle. So mm -hmm. we were we were not thinking uh, of 
doing hospitality, but we were thinking more along the lines of this uh, lifestyle of self-sufficiency, growing our own vegetables, having our own cow, having our own chickens. So, so that's what we tried to achieve. And um, we didn't have enough money just to do that. So we basically packed our stuff in, into a container, sent it to South Africa. It got here six weeks after we got here. And um, we bought this, this dilapidated farm and we've been fixing it ever since. And there's still stuff that can be fixed up and made better. But um, we've got this magnificent lodge now and uh, that's how we earn our income. And yeah. uh, um, the, we, li we live this, this unbelievably uh, li lifestyle that, that, that we just need to be really appreciative of. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we, we had this uh, Corona lockdown in a April last year. It's the beginning of uh, April it started. And yeah. um, so we had this hard lockdown and we just closed the gate. It took us 58 mm. days before we reopened the gate. So for 58 days, we didn't need to go shopping. We didn't, we, we got, got everything just from the place. Wow. So we, we, we had our own oranges, our own cows, we were making our own cheese, we make our own bread. And um, when we did finally go out after 58 days, what did we actually go and buy? Coffee beans and cow food. So, <laughs> Uh, oh, we're, we're, we're in a, a very, very self-sufficient situation. That's awesome. Um, so uh, yeah. what did you say that you did before that you were working in the IT, working mainly from home? Would you say you were a digital nomad yourself? Uh, no, I wasn't. I, 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 I used to do software development mm -hmm. and I had my own business in Cologne and I used to do uh software consulting and some some uh, programming and um then uh we we gave that all up to to come and live this this yeah. alternative lifestyle and then so, you started to live just the two of us first and then you got the idea well this is just so amazing we have to share with other people so well i think it was more okay i don't think i'm that that uh that generous i think it was more okay <laughs> I, we needed to find a way to earn some money. Yeah, and yeah, I get that. <laughs> the initial plan was that we were going to uh, just do some software development via the internet. Well, that that plan didn't work out because there, there was just no infrastructure. Oh, yeah, so sure. uh, we, we ended up uh, saying, okay, well, let's have a look at uh, see what we can do with tourism. And mm. th that worked, worked fantastically. And um, then along came uh, Corona, and uh, we, we've had to start to rethink things. Yeah, sure. And I think that, uh, this digital nomads is a is a, a good option because I don't foresee travel opening up uh, to places like Africa mm. within the next few years. It'll be it it, it, it needs to be people who are going to stay longer because they they just don't want to go through this whole COVID testing, quarantine uh, situations. Mm -hmm. And if you see how we live, uh, I think we're probably in one of the best places in the world to, to ride out this corona crisis. You know, uh, for us, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. Uh, mm -hmm. We still go for walk, walks on the farm. We take our dog for a walk. Uh, you know, it's... Um, there, there, there is no no COVID where we are because we just we we socially distance just by nature of it. Our right. nearest neighbour is four kilometres away from us, <laughs> uh, you know, and we can actually see their dwelling. Uh, mm -hmm. It's in the middle of a, a game reserve. If I drive there by car, it probably takes me fifteen minutes to get to the nearest neighbour. Wow! Uh, uh, because obviously four kilometres is a straight line. Uh, but I can't drive in a straight line. I have to go around the hills and sure. to, to actually see. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, I see, I see. So for everyone who missed it, it's uh, Ant Bear Lodge. Why, why did you call it this way? Are there a lot of Ant Bears in the area? So, 
I, I, I don't know. Do you know what an ant bear is? Yes, the, the bear is eating ants, right? With the with the very long nose. Well, like a, a pig, actually. It's a pig. A pig uh -huh. Long nose. Um, I think in German they call it ant vacuum. Uh, oh, so, okay. so, 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 when we got here, we we took over at, uh, a farmhouse that probably had last been lived in forty five years before we got here, mm. and uh, so the building was very much falling down mm -hmm. so we, we we climbed through a window because the door the the earth had just all fallen down and blocked up the door so we climbed through this window to see what was going on and i stood on these these old wooden floorboards that were, were now had been standing in the rain and were rotted and i fell through the floorboards so uh there were, to our surprise there was an ant bear living under the floorboards and I mean, this is a it's, it's a big animal, actually, they get up to like, somewhere between 60 and 70 kilos. Wow. And this ant ran past us got a hell of a fright and it was gone. So it's not that they're that rare, but you just never see one, you know, it, uh, it, it's, you're really lucky if you see an ant bear, uh, mainly because they, they, they only active at night. And um, okay. so uh since we've been here we've probably seen ant bears i don't know five or six times in, yeah, in 20 years so isn't that yeah, no, common like, but but you see their holes all over the place uh okay. they, they these massive holes in the ground and um so because because this ant bear ran past us and we we got such a shock that's how it got its name ant bear <laughs> that's a great story and and then you said you like teaching um also the guests or the volunteers how to work with wood how to um communicate with horses and you build all this that's now there with your own hands so how did you learn all of this how did you get the skills i would say probably youtube <laughs> really <laughs> <laughs> um, if, if I if I don't know how to do something, I I go and find out find somebody who knows how to do it. So the, we we got to it fairly slowly because I I, I used to do software development, not uh, construction, mm -hmm. and um, uh, so my brother gave me a book about building a house out of straw bales. So mm -hmm. that was that was what what we we first started. So we built a house for ourselves, and. Um, Building a house out of straw bales is an amazing experience. The 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 bales, the the cost of the walls of the house probably cost something like two hundred euros. That's what it cost me to hire the tractor and bale it and make the bales from the grass that was just around. Uh -huh. And then, obviously, the house co cost more than that because we we had to also put a a roof on it and windows and doors and the, the rest of it but it, it the the the, ba the bales just work so unbelievably well and they create fantastic insulation they generate these really beautiful organic structures um and and you're using reu re, uh, reusable um materials so it's not it's it, when this this house has served its lifespan It'll just become a pile of compost. Uh, you know, it's uh, yeah. Uh, it, the, the, it, it's really it, it's the way people should be doing things. That's true. And the the roof as well. It's all t done with thatched grass that we cut ourselves. And I had to learn about how this all worked. It took us about, I suppose, two years for us to build that house. Maybe maybe even two and a half years. Yeah. Uh, Although maybe I'm starting to think that a house never really gets finished, but uh, um, we, we were living in it after about two two years or two and a half years, and then. Um, we, and would, we, you say, would you say that's something everybody can do? Like um, everybody I like can. I would not be the one to build my own house. You know, <laughs> it's something that's very impressive to me right now. I, you know, I, we, we're really proud of what we've done. But looking back now, I think anybody can do this. 
So you've just got to have a little bit of that, uh, not too much fear of, of the unknown and just step off the, the cliff and start doing something. And everybody will make, make mistakes. Eh? That, yeah. that when, when people come and have a look at my, my straw bale house, because they, uh, quite a lot of people come and have a look at it because you get a reputation that you've done this and other people want to copy what you've done. Uh, I don't go and show what, what has, be, has worked perfectly because those are the things everybody will get to work anyway. I go mm. and explain things that, uh, that went wrong and what, what, to, what, what not to do. <clears throat> you know, a, a simple thing like if you build a, wa a house that's made out of a, wa uh, a con concrete wall or a brick wall, if you want a hole in it, you just drill a hole through it. Well, mm -hmm. a straw bale, you drill a hole through it and then you take the drill out and it reseals the hole. So you've got to think about all where, where you want to have holes before you start. Uh, and then I found, I found ways of, of get it, getting holes in the wall. So if you want to put a pipe through the wall somewhere, uh, I, I, I had to invent, invent ideas how, how to get through there. Uh, okay. And uh, yeah, it all worked out perfectly in the end. Awesome. And the same, same was with the building of the cave. Originally, we, we, we started with a reed bed filter. So a reed bed filter is uh, a way of cleaning water naturally before you put it back into the environment. So what we did there was um, uh, I thought it would be beautiful to have the, the reed bed filter on the side of the hill. Uh, and we'd have all this, this wetland and create all this bird life and stuff right next to the lodge. Mm. Well, it, that worked out perfectly. But a reed bed also has the a secondary aspect. It doesn't smell good. It smells like a drain. Oh, so no. now we have this next to the lodge, which, I mean, mm. you can't do that. So um, I then cleaned out the reed bed. I moved it down the hill. That, that all worked perfectly. So we've got the wetland down the hill now, but I now had this mess of, uh, of stuff that I'd built on the side of the hill. So sure. uh, to, to fix that, we ended up, uh, we thought we'd make just like a place where people could go and have tea and, uh, but it was horrible. It looked, it looked a little bit like a, a World War II concrete bunker. I just needed, it was horrible. And then, um, then we built the, we integrated the rock and the, 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 uh, the, the got stuff growing around it and uh, made it into this accommodation unit. And it's this magnificent accommodation unit. If I'd known what I know now, then I would have only built caves. They <laughs> are, just are so fantastic. They're easy to sell and people, people just love the experience of, uh, uh, spending time in a cave. Yeah. And then we, we've got these, these hammock chairs on the deck of the cave. Um, we also do a, a private dining experience on the, the deck of the cave where uh, we set up a table and people dine by candlelight under the stars on the deck of the cave. They, 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 they absolutely love that. Perfect for a proposal, right? <laughs> yeah, we've had quite a few actually. And we, we also a launch site for hot air balloons. So the, the, the balloons uh, launch from here, and um, we've had quite a few proposals in the balloons as well. I used to fly, fly, I had my own balloon here and I was flying myself, uh, but uh, my eyes are not as good as they, 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 should, they need to be. So um. I, I did that about two years ago. I had a, a microlight as well. And I used to go and, uh, I've got an airstrip and I used to go off with my microlight. And it was wonderful flying around the mountains, but, uh, as soon as your, your eyesight gets a bit dodgy, it's time to stop. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. And so you started this with your wife, right? And is it still just uh, you and her? Or is it, uh, are That's you like any volunteers that you have occasionally? And uh, then we employ, all the people we employ come from the, the local community. Mm -hmm. So we, we have this whole sustainable tourism concept. So the, the idea is that not that, that we don't just benefit, but the community benefits, the environment benefits. Uh, so it's th those three pillars. And um, 
we, we, we procure lo lo local produce, we grow a lot ourselves, we, we have our own cows for milk, chickens for eggs, we bake our own bread, we make our own cheese, uh, and then we do, do things like uh, teach people how to make cheese. That's also something that, that is amazing. Uh, cheese is so super simple to make. And, uh, and it, it's like people are amazed. How can you make cheese? Yeah, yeah, I am. I mean, how, how did you did you learn this from YouTube as well, or how did you know how to do it? Uh, there, there's a there's a um, a guy we know that's about uh, lives about sixty kilometers from where we are, mm -hmm. and he's got a cheese farm. So we just went and visited visited him for a day and uh, made cheese with him. So cool. that's how we had to make cheese, and then we came back and got the, the, the stuff together and started making cheese. Cool. And uh, uh, at the moment, uh, we, we had a, a bit of uh, a disaster about two months ago. Uh, oh, two no. of us got sick and died. So now, now uh, we, we haven't actually got a cow that's producing milk at the moment. So, mm. uh, but, but the, the next one we'll, we'll have a calf soon, and then we'll, we'll have milk again, and uh, we'll start making cheese again. That, the ideal is to have three cows, and then mm -hmm. you, you keep them each one getting a calf, sort of four months apart from each other. If you can get that to work, it's not so easy. Uh, mm -hmm. Otherwise, you have three cows giving birth at the same time, and then you've got mo so much milk you don't know what to do with it. <laughs> and, uh, uh, we have these Jersey cows, which have this the, this milk that's so rich with cream. It's it's just fantastic. Okay, cool. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Um, so I see you're also doing a lot with your guests, right? You you teach them all these, um, yeah, self-containing skills uh, and how to live a sustainable life. Uh, so you you would say you have like also a really close together living when they are at your state? So, so we, we do do that, but uh, my, the, my, most of the tourists who, who, who come and stay with us, they stay two or three, three or four nights and then move on. And what they're mostly interested in is going to see the mountains. There's some spectacular walking and waterfalls and uh, Bushman rock art and, and these kind of things. That, so. People who, who engage more with our, our lifestyle are generally people who stay here a bit longer. So I'm expecting that to happen more from this digital nomad uh, lifestyle. Absolutely, yeah. And um, why, why do you think your stay is good for digital nomads? I mean, you have great Wi-Fi. Do you also have uh, working areas where they can um, like sit with the laptop, enjoy the mountain view maybe? <laughs> so, so, um, I, we, we're in a situation that we can make whatever people want work. So um, we do. I do have a, an area that people could work in. If they, but I think that actually people would prefer to just do this outside. You know, the weather in South Africa is unbelievable. We have, I don't know. Uh, Three three hundred and twenty days of sunshine. Uh, it, it's it's not often that we have miserable weather. It's it's blue sky. It's just amazing. And then um, uh, winter can be a little bit chilly, so uh, uh, fireplaces and uh, uh, that that kind of thing are quite nice. But uh, uh, all of our rooms that, that we use for accommodation, they, they, they're very generous. So they, they have a bedroom and a lounge, and I could set up a table easily. Most of them have dressing tables. In fact, all of them have dressing tables already. Mm -hmm. So, we, But I could set up another, another desk or whatever somebody's need is, we'll, we'll, we'll cater for that. Um, we, we, we have done things like yoga workshops as well. And, oh, cool. uh, we've built a labyrinth. And uh, uh, so, and we 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 we've got this out of what? A labyrinth. So so a labyrinth is a is like a a, a 
pathway to the center and then a pathway back again. And, okay. uh, and uh, it's, it's used for meditation. So it, I would think it's probably, it's not in such a huge area, but probably you, you would walk three kilometers to walk to the middle and back. Wow. So it, it's these points that and are And you build it out of what? Amongst, so, so it's just a path. And oh, okay. the path is a, a marked path. Mm -hmm. uh, and it has flowers around it. And, and wow. uh, the, the whole purpose of it is for med meditating. So you, you, you walk into the center with a, with a problem, contemplating a problem, and you walk out contemplating the, the solution of the problem. Cool. Uh, and it's just a, it just works very well with these, these kind of yoga retreats yeah. or, or those kind of things that we've done. Of course, yeah. And then we, we, we've also got a, a, a chapel that we use as a, a multifunctional venue. So we could use that as well for if people wanted to set up an office there, that could also work quite well. Cool. And this let's is a book that's got uh, about 270 degrees of windows around it. Cool. And, and, and let's talk a little bit more about Drakensberg. So you said there's like a bunch of activities that people can do there. They can go, of course, hiking in the mountains. And what else? What's there to explore? So, so there's a game reserve across the road. They can go for horse trails inside the game reserve. You know, to, to go and ride, ride next to wildebeest and buffalo and rhino. It's just, it's just unbelievable. It's a, it's a thing that you, you just don't get. Then there's, there's a ton of this adventure activities. You know, they've got downhill scooters and um, uh, um, cable slides and uh, um, uh, off-road off road, uh, 4x4 trails and all that kind of thing as well. Quad biking. And then uh, something that the, the, Drakens, the Drakensburg is a World Heritage Site. And it's it's one of the few World Heritage Sites that's there because it's it's got uh, of cultural heritage and natural heritage. So uh -huh. the, 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 the nature is just unbelievably dramatic. It's these vertical cliff faces that are like a kilometer vertical. There's the Tugela Falls, which is 948 meters. It's the wow. second highest waterfall in the world. The, the highest is that in Venezuela, the Angel. So uh, there's a lot of hiking. Uh, people can even do overnight trips out into the mountains and sleep in a little rock shelter. Uh, uh, then there's also all this Bushman rock art. Uh, the, the, that's why it's a cultural heritage. Um, and uh, the, the rock art is really impressive. It's, uh, you know, you can, you can see the symbolism the spirituality of the bushman in the in the paintings. Some some of it you need somebody to kind of like guide you to so that you can see what you're looking at. But uh, it's really yeah. really good stuff. Awesome. And then bird, there's a lot of bird, bird stuff to do. There's a bird of prey show. There, there's there's the Brockensburg Boys Choir School, which is they they put out performances once with, with uh, um, uh, it's, it's like the Vienna Boys Choir. It's on the same same standard cool. uh, as, as that. And um, they, they put it. Oh, and then we've got a a, a local villager who's built a hammer camp. And uh, he built a what? That, Sorry. A hammer camp. So it's a, it's eight hammocks that hang in a circle. Yeah. He, he takes kids down to hammocks. Uh, uh, in the evening, once it's dark, and then um, he gets settled into the hammocks in winter. He puts hot water bottles in the, the, the hammocks and uh, blankets so that it's not cold. And then he tells these African stargazing stories. So uh, the, these these stories of how the, the sun and moon got into the sky and why the sky is so far away. Wow. Uh, they like, they're almost like Aesop's fables. But they, mm -hmm. they, they're very different. They're sort of like a, a, a bit of meaning and a, an essence to the story, as well as a child's. Story. Awesome. And That's
Very, very right. interesting. And then abseiling, we do abseiling here on the farm as well. There's a cliff face and people can jump off the cliff with a, on a rope if they want to. Uh, it's actually kind of like, it's not, it's not that scary, but uh, yeah. come back with the eyes after you've done that. It's like um, the zip line or what is it? So, so you put a rope down the cliff and then you, you flip onto that rope and then you slide down the rope down. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. So it's and, like climbing, but the other way around, like reverse climb. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then we, we, we also, we've got a slack packing trail. Now, now that, that's something really cool. So instead of carrying all your stuff from one place to the next, we, we, go, we walk lodge to lodge. So okay. we, we, and then we 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 go with a guide who who, who show, shows people the way, and um, uh, they just they just carry what they what they need for for the for the trip for the day a, a rain a raincoat and a bottle of water and that, that kind of thing, and then uh -huh. we drop the luggage from the one lodge to the next. Okay. Uh, it's a, it's a four day trail. And uh, two of the days are spent walking through this game reserve. So they walk walk past the rhinos and buffalo, and uh, they, they obviously they've got a ga game uh, ranger with them. And um, uh, I mean, you'd have to you have to have that. But it's a, it's a really special experience, and people yeah, don't I have to keep their luggage from one place to the next. It works particularly well for for people travelling because uh, you know they, they're not traveling with the, the sort of hiking backpacks. Most of them have suitcases and they, they just not, not uh, it's just not the right thing to, to, to do. Yeah, I mean, it's difficult to, to go on a four days walking trip with like 15, 20 kilos on the back, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and this, this is really cool that uh, they, 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 get, they get proper food in the evenings, they get, uh, um, uh, I don't know. Uh, they, they have a proper bed to sleep in, and uh, the, this whole kind of lodge experience. But they have mm -hmm. that camping, walking from one one to the next, trail experience, which is, is, is awesome. What is that called again? What, what has... So, so it, it, it starts at Anpe Lodge, and mm -hmm. it's called the James Castle Slack Packing Trail. Okay, I'm sorry. So, uh, we, we basically just created it, and it, it goes. It, 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 there's three lodges involved: Leopards Lair Lodge, and then Shanker Lodge, and the Zulu Waters Game Reserve. Awesome. And now I would like to talk with you about uh, the wildlife in your area in the mountains of the South African. Um, I mean, it starts with the end bears, right? <laughs> Which we already talked about that are really seen. And there, you said you see a lot of buffaloes every day. Um, what what else is there that you discover daily? So, so, uh, the, the, the things that you would probably see the most of it are the smaller things. So there, there's uh, and some antelope and uh, rabbits or hares, um, uh, porcupines, warthogs. Uh, we, we see them quite a lot. Uh, what, what were they called in the Lion King? Pumla. Huh? Uh, um, and then ostriches, that, that's another thing we see. Eland, that, it's a mm -hmm. massive antelope. It's, it weighs about uh, 800 kilos. Wow. <laughs> that's a lot. And I, I, another thing we had, we, we had here is um, uh, we, we had a serval. Uh, it's, a, it's a spotted cat. Looks a little bit. A little bit like a cheetah, but it's it's smaller. It probably weighs about, I would say, six kilos. And so, uh, we had we had several. They kept eating our chickens and our uh, our geese and turkeys. So oh. eventually, I made a trap and took the serval. And uh, yeah. then we took took the serval next door and re released it in the uh, the game reserve. But it, it was it was it is such a limited animal. But I can tell you, after see, catching that that, that serval. I can see I became afraid. It's a <laughs> massive, we definitely not go near that, that thing. Yeah, and what would you say yeah. is the most uh, dangerous animal that is in your area? Not maybe for you, but... 
Huh? The humans, I think. The humans, yeah. That's yeah. right. We are definitely in the danger. Yeah, there, there's certain things that you, you need to, uh, like when if you're going in the game reserve and you go, you walk uh, next to rhinos and buffalo, there's certain things that you need to know the behavior of these animals. But um, otherwise, uh, you, you just don't, uh, you just ignore them basically and they ignore you. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, and maybe for. Are the most dangerous. Sorry, we've, never had anybody, we've never had anybody hurt by animals, and we've never had anybody bitten by a snake or spider. Or, it's and not, these things the exist here, but they, they're not the problem. Yeah. And um, for your animals that you have on your stay, um, maybe you said the cheaters tried to attack them, right? Is yeah, so, so we had that, that, that problem for. for a couple of weeks we were losing chickens and then mm -hmm. uh, I, I set up the trap and caught, caught this uh, so it wasn't a cheetah it was a server the cheetah is probably double the size again okay so uh, I don't think we've got any cheetahs around here uh, although there are leopards uh, I've never mm -hmm. seen one there. yeah so and um, you said there are always also wild horses is that true is that like there are wild horses uh there, there's there's uh um we we just have some horses that that have sold and have never been ridden before so the, we we've taught these horses how to ride yeah uh, ridden, uh just using these horse whispering methods yeah and would you say that you get very very close to to the wildlife that you can, um, like maybe from from the you said in the cave there are like glass doors that or glass floors. Did I understand that correctly? Glass doors. So, doors. Uh, yes. That you can see you, the wildlife the maybe from there. And it still look look open. You 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 wouldn't really see the animals. Well, you might see some animals that, that walk around. Uh, mm -hmm. right close to the cave, right close to accommodation. But most of it uh, you would see either in the game reserve or if you're walking around the farm or that, that kind of thing. Is yeah. Where you'd see it. Cool. And is there any um, like special memory that you have where you, like an encounter with any uh, animal that you have? I mean, you've been there for 21 years now and probably you've been. Uh, in a very probably biased. Uh, it's when, when we, we see antlers that we get the most. Experience. Yeah. Really. You know, the, uh, if I see one, I come home and I say, I saw an antler, or, or, or if it was around, she, she does exactly the same thing. Um, the, we, we had a lizard. That 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 uh, came in, came in and stayed with the uh, moved into the one of the staff accommodation. And um, a monitor lizard is about it's probably a meter eighty long, so it's, it's a long, it looks a bit like a crocodile, but it's got no teeth. It's actually not dangerous, mm -hmm. uh, but you don't know that until you you you. Discovered what a monitor lizard is, <laughs> and uh, um, but it's not uh, uh, somebody came and called me to say that there's a crocodile in their room. And uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> look, I didn't believe it. And then, no, uh, of course. Uh, shock when I found this monitor lizard, and then uh, we eventually caught it, put it in a bag, and took it down to the river and let it go. You yeah. you could see it got down to the river. Jumped into into the pond and then swam away and then came back and looked at us and was just saying, "Thank you for letting me go." Yeah, so that's the kind of feeling it was. It was really this, nice. This water is more like my stay, not not where I've been before, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Great, that's a funny story. So uh, yeah, thank you so much for being here today with us and uh, talking about your beautiful stay.
like uh, I'm really fascinated by your project over there. It's I think it's great what you're doing that you're doing this self-containing farm and just let everyone who wants to be part of this is really something that I find very very amazing so, and um, so I think. You down here. Sorry. When are we going to see you down here? I wish I wish very soon. I'm, I'm, I got my vaccine last week, my first one, and as soon as I get my second one, uh, I'm going to travel again. So um, it's definitely on my bucket list right now. <laughs> good, good. I, I hadn't heard from Drakensburg before, and uh, I've been re doing some research the a couple of last days, and I'm very excited to go there myself. So you got me in the yeah, trap no. now. <laughs> and, uh, the whole of KwaZulu in the is incredible. Um, I'll, I'll, after this conversation, I'll send you a link to a competition that we're taking part in, and yeah. maybe you can publish that competition to to uh, everybody on your your list as well. Of course, uh, there's a competition that you can win to spend um, uh, 12 days traveling around KwaZulu Natal, and they go to some of the most amazing places. So definitely enter that. Great. Yeah, send me the link and I can share it with everyone. And um, yeah, that's great having you. Everyone who's as excited as I am now, you can go to namedstays.co and book a stay right now at Aunt Lodge. Uh, you're open to uh, all guests, right? You're not restricted uh, with COVID? No, we're not. We're not. Cool. We're not. We're, we, we adhere to the COVID protocols and uh, uh, we wear masks and people wear masks interacting. But things are so open here. That, cool. uh, it's, it's not really a restriction. Cool. So, yeah, there's nothing holding anyone back. So everyone can go. And the only um, thing holding people back is that they have to go into quarantine when they go home again. Oh, yeah. So they just can't stay there. I mean, why go home then? So that, that, that's pretty much what Yuri said. He, he he's supposed to go go home in six weeks' time, and he's now he's looking for a how, how's he going to extend his visa and stay here for six months or you know because it's just so much nicer to live in this paradise than to live in lockdown in Germany. Yeah, yeah, I feel that. <laughs> I feel it. So yeah, thanks again for being here with us, and um, we stay in touch. And we keep each other updated and um, have a good day. Or evening, right? You too. Yes. Yeah, it's, uh, it's dark outside. Oh, okay. Yeah, here's still some sunlight, but it's the same time, right? It's 6 p.m. at your place too? Yeah, it's 6 p.m. as well. Okay, so enjoy your evening. Nice setting. Cheers. Bye bye.